Hey, good morning, everybody. All right, um, kind of slow on the line today. Uh, sun's out though. First time we've seen that in about four days. Uh, still kind of cool though. You know, we're still in the 40s. Um, <clears throat> and we're on the edge of this field. We got a feeder right, whoop, right over there behind us, and all of this over here. Wow, well, look at my tag number. All this over here is uh is you know wetland swamp and everything. So we got a lot of raccoon activity here. And we actually had a dig out right over here last night. We've remade that one, um, and I kind of screwed up when I was videoing it. So we're going to make another set right over here about 8 or 10 feet away because there's a ton of raccoons in this area. And, you know, the more the merrier. So anyway, I'm going to make a step-down set here and going to try to uh, video that and talk you guys through it as, as best as possible. So anyway, uh, stick around, and I hope you enjoy the video. All right, so first thing on uh, on my step down sets is uh, my hole, and normally with my bait holes, um, I tend to kind of angle them back a little bit uh, to make the animal want to stand a little further back on the set to look and work down at it. But with a step down, I angle it not quite straight down, but you know, like a 22 and a half degree angle. You got you know 90, 45, and then somewhere right in here is my step down. So we're gonna go ahead and punch that in now. And I do like to make the uh, I like to make the step down a big a big uh, big obvious hole. Um, I don't I don't like just the auger size hole that you get uh, making a dirt hole set. So that's it there. That's the that's the hole that I put in. I mean you see it's you know big enough to fit your fist in. <clears throat> Back on the stand here. All right. Okay. Got my steak driver. Okay, so next your hammer or trowel or shovel or whatever it is you carry with you. Uh, this dirt, man, is so nice to trap in because it's, it's just loose. You can grab and dig with your hand. Anyway, come back from the mouth of that hole and just create like a, a little step. I mean, uh, just a little a little depression down in there and kind of round it up and make it somewhat natural looking as natural as you can make something like this all right so let's take a look at that okay so here's the beginning of it and you know we're down we're down two and a half to three inches uh below the normal surface level here and then next we're gonna bed a bed to trap in. So let's get on to that. Uh, polyfill. That's what I use uh, for underlining or under all or whatever you wanna call it. It's good and good and cushiony and it keeps the dirt out. <clears throat> And guys, I'm here to tell you, with raccoons and red fox especially, with anything, with anything, any animal, any trap you set, that bed better be tight. That trap better not be able to move and shift in the ground at all. If it does, you need to stop, start over, or fix it. But do not leave a trap that moves in the ground. This trap here, I mean, this is the free jaw on it. I can grab that free jaw and wiggle it around and nothing is moving. And don't be afraid to get your fingers down here by your trap. I mean, this is a Bridger 175, and with these gloves on, it it doesn't even really sting if you if you get popped by it. You know, it's like sticking your finger on a mouse trap. Really, is about the equivalent of it. <clears throat> oh. 
Okay, so here's a look at the bedded trap. So here's my bedded trap, and I can touch anywhere, anywhere on this trap. And that sucker does not move, it is solid. So anywhere an animal steps down here, it's gonna feel like natural ground to him. And it's not gonna allow the trap to shift under his foot. That is what's gonna cause your dig ups. 99 times out of 100 is a poorly bedded trap. So here we go, we're gonna take the sifter, really lightly put, put a little cover over that. You don't need a pile of dirt over the top of it. It was actually the more dirt you put, you put a half inch of dirt over your pan, that's a half inch less uh, catching capability that, that trap has. So just a real light covering. Uh, it doesn't need to be buried super deep or anything like that. So anyway, here is a look at a finished up step down. All right, so you can see, you can see the depression here. I mean, like I say, we're two to three inches deep, probably two inches deeper than the uh, ground level once we bed it and sift it and everything like that. Big, big obvious hole there in the ground. And uh, I'm sorry for the lighting. Like I say, the sun's come out and it's casting some nasty shadows on us. But what this causes, uh, what this causes an animal to do is when he comes up to the set, and he starts working the set and he's working out here on all this high stuff that you've you know piled up it looks like something's been digging out at the hole and it's just got dirt piled up on it and they'll start working this outside but then when they go to step down to actually get in the bait hole when they step down hence the name step down set when they step down they have all of their weight going into this into this uh, trap and it's a dedication when they step on it they're they're had you don't get toe catches um you know you don't just barely snag critters when you get them in these step down sets that bobcat i caught yesterday you saw how deep of a pad catch that was on that previous video uh, that was a step down set uh his toes were still touching the pan so it's a good and you know uh this area i'm trapping right now has got a lot of turkeys in it and i kind of feel like uh, these big deep bowls like this kind of deter the turkeys. I think the turkeys tend more to walk around it uh, than potentially walking over it and them getting caught, which is not what we want. So anyway, there's a look at my step down and uh, we'll move on down the line. We still got a few traps left to check and we'll probably show you guys another set on this video if we have time.